not bad for a human, but I, I think we will not be able to hold a candle to AI. He's Pro probably an alien. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Uh, there's only two. Probably a reptilian, isn't? It? What do you make of Elon Musk? You've spoken about him a bit. You met I'm him. Struck with admiration. Uh, That's what I make of him. And I always think, this idea I always of think of that as a primary. Well, it's all. It's like, do you find this comedian funny? It's like, well, I laugh at him. You know what I mean? It's not propositional again. And so, I would. There are things I would like to ask Mr. Musk about the Mars venture. I don't know what he's up to there. It strikes me as absurd in the most fundamental sense, because I think, well, it'd be easier just to build an outpost in the Antarctica or in the desert. Well, how much of the human endeavor is absurd? Well, th that's, what did Nietzsche say? Great men are seldom credited with their stupidity. <laughs> Who the hell knows what Musk is up to? I mean, obviously he's building rockets. Now he's motivated because he wants to build a, a, a platform for life on Mars. Is that a good idea? Who am I to say? Do you he's think he's building the rockets, man, but I'd like to ask him about it. Well, it isn't obvious to me that I'm in any position to evaluate Elon Musk. Like I would like to talk to him and find out what he's up to and why, but I mean, he's an impossible person. What he's done is impossible, all of it. It's like he built an electric car that works. Now, does it work completely and will it replace gas cars or should it? I don't know, but if we're gonna build electric cars, he seems to be the best at that by a lot and he more or less did that uh, people carp about him but he more or less did that by himself i know he's very good at distributing responsibility and all of that but he's the spearhead and then that was pretty hard and then he built a rocket at like one tenth the price of nasa rockets and then he shot his car out into space that's pretty hard and then he's building this boring company more or less as a it's sort of it's this whimsical joke in some sense, but it was not a joke. He's amazing. And Neuralink, delving into the uh, the depths yeah. of the mind. And Starlink, it's like, go Elon, as far as I'm concerned. And then, you know, he puts his finger on things so oddly. The, pro the problem is underpopulation. It's like, I think so too. I think it's a terrible problem that we're, the West, for example, is no longer at replacement with regard to birth rate, it means we've abandoned the virgin and the child in a most fundamental sense. It's a bloody catastrophe. And Musk, he's, he sees it clear as can be. It's like, well, and where everyone else is running around going, oh, there's too many people. It's like, nope, got that. Not only, see, I've learned that there are falsehoods and lies and there are anti-truths. And an anti-truth is something that's so preposterous that you couldn't make a claim that's more opposite to the truth. And the claim that there are too many people on the planet is an anti-truth. So, you know, people say, well, you have to accept limits to growth and et cetera. It's like, I have to accept the limits that you're going to impose on me because you're frightened of the future. That's your theory, is it? Okay. I saw you took a trip to the Tesla factory. What were your thoughts after meeting Elon Musk? Did you get to speak to him much? Uh, I wouldn't say much. We we spoke probably for 20 minutes in total, uh, not purely privately because there was other people around. But you know, I just that just barely gets you to know the surface of someone like Musk because he's an amazing person and God only knows what's what's up with him. All things considered, we saw his new truck. He was taking people out for a ride. I I didn't I didn't go out for a ride. Uh, the truck's an amazing piece of engineering. The factory is massive. Um, you know, what do you say about someone who built a functional electric car and then shot it into space on a rocket? It's, he's a singular person. It went very well. It was a very interesting evening. So I was pleased to be there. And, you know, we sort of walked around each other a bit and it was just fine. You know, people think I'll say what I have to say when I get to the point where I'm protected and secure. It's like, first of all, being protected and secure does not give you the courage to say what you have to say. That's, that's a completely, that theory couldn't be more backwards. You think you're gonna get braver and braver as you get more and more protected? You think that's how the world works? I mean, I've watched university professors 
think that at some point they're going to say what they think as they develop their career. But by the time they're protected and secure, they've spent so much time not saying what they think that they aren't even who they were and they don't know what they think. So, no, he says what he says because he's always done that. And people who are like him are like that. And so Steve Jobs, I presume, was exactly the same way. I mean, I know people who knew him. He always said what he thought. And, and he was pretty damn cut and dried about it, which is why the Apple products are such miracles of, of technological mastery. He had an unbelievably canny design eye and was very... He cut whole projects without a second thought in some sense when they weren't working. The enterprise he's put together is unbelievably high functioning. I mean, to produce a, an automobile sub-industry that's actually competitive and to bring down the cost of space exploration by a factor of 10, and to invent reusable rockets, and to have developed this boring technology. It's, it's a miraculous. He's Pro probably an alien. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Uh, there's only two... Probably a reptilian, isn't it?